My name is Milos. I'm coming from Nordius, gaming studio based in Belgrade. Uh, I'm here to tell you a bit more about our giving back efforts to the community. I will mention community a few times during this half an hour. And when I say community, I mean the community where we are working and living as a company. So for us, that's Serbia. I'm going to talk about different strategical things, different stra tactical things, and I hope uh, there will be a lot for you to take away from, from, this, from this lecture. Ask yourself, why should we, as game, game producers, game developers, give back to our communities? I have a few reasons why. First one, that we need to figure out that our businesses are an integral part of our communities. If our, our communities are not developing, our businesses in one moment will have problems with the resources. What, when I say resources, what I mean, I mean knowledge, I mean people, I mean funding. We need to figure out the ways how to develop our community so our business can grow, can grow with it. Second important thing is that you need to stand out. In this moment, there is hundreds, thousands, gazillion companies that are very similar to yours. And if you want to attract the brightest and pa most passionate people to work for you, you need to find a way how to stand out. Um, and if you show your future employees that you're thinking strategically, and you're, how to develop your community, that you're thinking strategically a few years ahead about your business, and that you're having a cause that is bigger than your business in some sense, that is the best, one of the best ways how to differentiate. Eventually, if you don't want to do it, your players will ask you to do it. With all these generations that are now here, millennials, Z, Y, all these generations, the pur for all these generations, purpose is something that is very important. There is many, many surveys, surveys that shows that millennials, for example, will rather buy products from companies that have some kind of purpose, the, comparing, of course, to ones that don't have. So one way or another, if you don't want to do it, in one moment your players will ask you to. This kind of activities are awesome way to create a different type of engagement for your people. When you say people, I mean your colleagues that work with you. When I say different engagement, different than their everyday, everyday work. And of course, that will create different content for external and internal communication that you can use. And of course, awesome content that you can use to, to tell, tell everybody what you're working on. So how we started? We, when we were founded in 2010, we didn't know a lot about giving back. But we knew that we want to do it. Uh, so what we did, we asked our colleagues, hey guys, what is the thing that you're passionate about? And it was babies. So yeah, awesome, awesome thing to be passionate about. And what we did, we invested 1 million euros in the construction of 15 maternity wards in Serbia. Those 15 maternity wards are responsible for 30% of all babies born in our country. Huge thing. If you want to compare it to US market, it's like we invested $180 million into some cause. A lot, a lot of money there. I'll talk a lot about Serbia. So for starters, let me give you a little bit of context who we are as an audience and who we are as a country. So as I said, we are founded in 2010. We have three games published by now, and one that we are mostly known for is Top 11, Football Manager. We have 200 million registered users, and that game, and Top 11, is one of the most successful games for mobile platforms in, in sports category. We also have Golden Boot and Heroic, which are out there for, for a short period of time, but we will see how they will develop. 
We're a crew of 170 people from 22 nationalities. So very, very diverse group. And as I said, we are based in Belgrade, Serbia. So Serbia, not Siberia. Siberia is in Russia, it's very cold there, bears, snow, probably the half, of the half of the Siberia is not even livable. We're in Eastern Europe, you know, in Balkans region. Very beautiful region, small region, but with very turbulent history. We as a country have very thriving IT industry right now, and worldwide we are known for our tech talents. Also, we are very known through history uh, for our scientists and our sportsmen. So to test your knowledge, do you know who this guy is? Tesla. I cannot see anything, but I heard Tesla somewhere. That's right, Nikola Tesla. So this is the guy that this Tesla automotive company was named by, and he's responsible for all the electricity we have here. So what he did, he created a system to transport electricity on long distances. Of course, he did many other amazing things, but this is the one that he's mostly known for. And he lived a, a lot of his, many, like half of his life here in US. Mikhailo Pupin, it's not a quiz because probably you wouldn't know who he is, but he's a very cool guy. Why? He has a crater on the moon named by him. And he was the one of the founders of NASA. Also, he perfected the phone, so um, not a mobile phone, the landline phone, so our parents would be very happy with him. But he did also some many amazing things in, 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 different, in different areas. And do you know this guy? Come on. Yeah, uh, maybe I heard greatest tennis player of all time somewhere. Yeah. I think he is. Maybe we can argue about it and talk a little bit after. But 70 and something titles speak a lot who he is. So, small country with some amazing people out there and, and tech talents, thriving IT industry. But let's get back to our babies. So how we did this activity? We, we, found, we supported the NGO that was working on this project. We give them financial support and we support this activity in different communication ways. So we help, help them spread the word about it. And mostly that was it, because we couldn't use our expertise in this area because we do not know anything about babies, except they are cute, etc. So to give, uh, uh, before we go more deeply into the, into the re reconstruction, let me give you one other example from Serbia of giving back activity. This activity is from the banking sector, so I have to use this very generic banking slide to show it. And you're right, there is something missing here. This guy, he's like the guy for the whole corporate um, PPTs, and you can find him everywhere. But the, the text out there, it's something that is not generic, so pay attention on it. What this bank did, in Serbia, if you want to take a loan as an entrepreneur, your company must be older than two years. You're too risky for the banks, and they don't want to give you a loan. What this bank did, they created a support educational system that gave you a consultancy before you asked for a loan, somebody to help you to develop your business plan, to understand how your business should look like in the future. And when you get your loan, they gave you a mentorship of one, in duration of one year where some entrepreneur from your industry will help you to further develop your business. So, what, so essentially, they created a product and attach different giving back activities on it. We have these two examples side by side. Let's try to, to compare, compare them and understand, understand the differences. So we can both agree that both of them are giving back. They are activities for the community. They are solving some problems out there. So that's, that's out there. Can you help me with this? In what ways were companies involved? When you, when you look at the activity that we did, in what way we were involved as a Nordius in this battle for maternity wards? Finance. Finance. You're true. You're right. You're true. You're right. So, and the bank? 
service. Yeah, service, knowledge, people. They use the expertise of their people to create a value for the community. How, the, how their people were involved, our people were involved in communication. We were out there, we we're talking about the things that we are doing, we are, going, we are opening maternity wards, we are trying to use our, our, our PR agencies to help to spread the word, etc. And the bank, the bank used the expertise and knowledge of their people to really do some work out there and help entrepreneurs directly. How this impacted the businesses? For us, when we thought about it, we, we didn't thought about the business when we made the decision to support Battle for Maternity Wards. It was a burning problem in Serbia. We just wanted to solve it. We want to help. Um, we want to help our community, so we just went out there and did it. And it, it's very hard to put a value when you're helping babies. You never know. It's very hard to, to like calculate it in your business. But for the bank, bank, they created a pipeline for their future customers. When you help entrepreneurs in early stage, it's very, very probably they will be uh, they will stay with you after they, they grew and become a, a, a stable business. When it comes to external communication, a lot of people ask us why babies? Where is the connection? What, what's happening there? Why, why are you as a gaming company are helping babies? And for the bank, it was something that was very logical to explain. Since, hey, we are bank, we are financial institution, we are helping entrepreneurs start their businesses. Super logical. So nobody asked them why, they just asked them to give them more information on how we can help. So when we have those two examples side by side, what do you think? Which one of those will have longer impact, in, a bigger impact in the long run? Let's, let's drop hands. Who think the baby example? And the bank? So probably others. You heartless people, you choose banks before babies. <laughs> but you're right. Bank will have the, the, the bigger impact. Why? Because the pro they, their giving back activity is integrated in their product. And their product and this activity will help them grow as a business, so the impact, when you're calculating it over the years, will grow. Just imagine the situation where we, as a gaming company, ran into some problems. This activity will be the first one that should be cut, because that's how businesses work. You have, a, you have like expense, it's not giving any value to a business, cut it and move on. So in that sense, the bank will, will, will create more impact. Also, what is important, this activity was a part of a bigger strategy. It was just one of activities that was aimed to create a value for the community. So when we finished with our, with our giving back, with our uh, Battle for Maternity Awards activity, we wanted to figure out, okay, how should we use more knowledge and our expertise to help community out. And what we did, we created a strategy that has four different stakeholders in it. First stakeholder is our employees. We wanted to figure out the ways how we can help our employees give back to the causes they care about. So we want to create different internal events, different fundraisers to help them to do it. Other stakeholders are players. We, as a gaming company, have a huge platform, our game, or now our, our games, that will grow. And th those platforms and those players have some causes that they're passionate about. And we want to use our platforms as a way to give them opportunity to give back. Third is environment. There is a huge talk about environment and in what kind of, like, about the problems that we are in right now. So we don't want to be a part of the problem. We want to try and be part of the solution and think about how we're using our resources and what we can we do better. And fourth, which is most important for us and probably most interesting for you, is community. So when we were thinking about how to help out our community, we figured out that there are three challenges out there. 
First one is very low level of digitalization in Serbia. So we are very, our, our systems are very outdated. We are still waiting in lines, in post offices, banks. We don't use uh, modern tools in, in our everyday business or administration. And we wanted, as a company, to figure out how to help there. Second thing is education. We have an outdated higher education, which is not creating um, talents that are, that are needed for this fourth industrial revolution. We want to change that. And third thing is, we as a gaming company, uh, we care about gaming ecosystem. In Serbia, the gaming ecosystem is very underdeveloped, and it, we wanted to, to set as our mission to find a way how to help that, system, to, that ecosystem develop. First thing that we did to, do, to like go out and solve all of these problems is create an umbrella organization with like-minded companies. Why an umbrella organization? We figured out that if you want to tackle the, system, the systemic problems, like huge problems, you need to work very closely with the state. You need to go and change the laws. You need to work with ministries. And we, as a company, we didn't have that power to do it. So we created a Digital Serbia initiative with 26 like-minded companies that are from different industries, so we will have more, we will have more soft power to use when we are dealing when we are like dealing with different different stakeholders on the top. We wanted to to, to figure out how to solve this for, to solve problems in these areas. First one is higher education. Second one is legal framework. Third, startup ecosystem, and fourth. We want to figure out the ways how we can help wider public understand the importance of digitalization and such. So when we had an umbrella organization, the second thing we wanted to do is create a physical space from where we can run these changes. So we created the Nordius Hub. Nordius Hub is a co-working slash event space where it's a physical space very close to our office. And from there, we want to do different things in the community. We want to run different programs for talents. We want to help talents develop even further and help them to, help them to start creating value for their community as early as possible. Also, we want to help out the community-driven pro programs. So we want to help communities, programs that are coming from community to have a space where they can do their programs and, and help them increase their impact. We want to help our people develop even further so they can increase their, their impact on the community. And fourth, we want to help Serbian Gaming Association develop the gaming industry as much as possible. With helping them, uh, doing, with helping them to do different events in uh, in Nordius Hub, and also run the di run different programs in our hub for gaming community. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about those programs. So first is game making boot camp. We figured out that our students in Serbia are not getting into any touch with the uh, with the gaming industry during their studies. So if they're, they're, if they're playing games, that's the only way how they, they communicate. Because in, in our curriculums, there isn't anything that is connected to the gaming industry. So we figured out that we have to show them how gaming industry looks like from inside. And we created a boot camp that will have different tracks for different type of students to show them a bigger picture how the, the gaming industry looks. We will have a track for art, artists, we'll have tracks for game devs, for, um, we'll have track for uh, business development, game designers, etc. And with the idea to put the gaming industry and career in gaming as one of the first few choices um, for the students when they think about what is my next step in the career. Second program is Indie Game Incubator. We want to develop a gaming industry in Belgrade, in Serbia. And if we want to do that, we need to, we, we figured out that we do not have a mechanism that is creating or, or supporting new and upcoming gaming studios. 
So what we did, we created an incubator program which will last six months and it will consist from a co-working space for six months. We will also do assessment of the indie game studio and give them mentors for different areas where they need the help the most. And we will organize different workshops that are more, they're like general business workshop, workshops that will help businesses understand the other roles their business needs to, to have, like HR, finance, account, accounting, law, etc. We hope that this program will help us to produce one, two, three ga new gaming studios in the future, and it will help us fuel the, fuel the gaming industry. This example, this is also one activity that we did, but it's not connected to, the, our, to our community. It's more connected to our, our, uh, our community of our uh, players. And, but I wanted to mention it to you just for you to understand how you can use your games maybe to impact, uh, impact, your, impact your players. Do you maybe know what is this? Have you heard about War Child Football Club? No? Yeah. Um, it's a soccer club, so food, not football, soccer club. And the War Child is an organization that is helping children um, reintegrate into their societies after they survived some kind of war or um, they, were, they lived in near the war zone, etc. War Child Football Club is the program they are running in Central African Republic where they want to use football or soccer as a tool to help those children reintegrate into their society. For us, we have a football game and it was, it was an easy match to make. You can see they have very funky jerseys, and those jerseys, they're using those jerseys in real life, and they're, all, they're awesome looking. So what we figured out what we can do, we offered those jerseys in our in-game shop. So you can buy those jerseys and their emblem in our in-game shop, and all the proceedings will go to them. The response from the community was amazing. The sales of those of, the, of this jersey surpassed the sales of jerseys from some of like most famous soccer clubs, football clubs in the world, like Real Madrid, Paris Saint Germain, and others. For us, this is just scratching the surface. It's it's a new turf, but I think there are studios out there that are doing a great job with this, and I think this is a ter territory where we can do so many amazing things in the future. So. Let's summarize how we, how we got there and how maybe you, when you go home, can retrace our steps and, and maybe be here even in a few years and talk about it. First of all, try to start with, with anything, really. Don't overthink it. You go back home and th think about what is the cause that you are passionate about or what is the cause that your company is passionate about and just, or, or your people. That are passionate. Just go out there and solve it. We did it with, with uh, Better for Maternity Awards. And in the end, it was something that created a huge value. We solved a huge problem. So it's just important to start somewhere. But when you're doing that, think about what are the problems out there in the community that really you or your company have expertise and knowledge to solve it and that you're, of course, passionate about it. For us, those were higher education, digitalization, and gaming ecosystem. When you figure out those, those challenges, try to figure out what are the knowledge, what are the skills and expertise you have that you can use in solving those problems. Look, money can be given by anybody, but the expertise and knowledge we have as an industry, it's a quite unique. Uh, for Serbia, it's certainly totally unique, because maybe there is one, two, three companies in Serbia that created a product from scratch and had a global success with it. But for, for your communities, it's important to understand what are your skills that you excel and knowledge that you excel and how you can transfer and create value for the community. And of course, try to create a holistic strategy around it. Try to understand who are the people that you want to impact and try to understand what are the ways that you can impact them. We're just in the beginning of this, of this like, adventure. 
as a gaming industry. Uh, the rest of the world and the rest of the industries went a few steps ahead. But the important thing is that we are not pioneers. So we, we can maybe use the knowledge and the experience they had to start a few steps ahead of them and try to, to do amazing things. Uh, we have responsibility to, to try because we are in the entertainment industry. We are very high grossing industry. And what is more important, we are, in we are like touching so many lives out there. So many people that are living in so many, in, in many different communities with many different problems. And we have a platforms that we can use to harvest different skills, expertise, money or whatever it is and try to solve some problems out there. Thank you so much. This was, this was all for me. Uh, it was an amazing experience being here and talking with you. Uh, please, if you have some questions, feel free to ask. I think we'll have three, four minutes. Anyhow, uh, if we don't have more time to do it, I will be in Overlook 2014 for 45 minutes. So you can come over there and like talk to me. Also, these are the, the, my contacts, so feel free to reach out and, and say hi or ask any questions you have. Thank you so much. So, uh, how hey. many people does it take? And like, what's the size that you need to do something like this? It really depends. But you need to, yeah, it really depends. Right now, from, from Nodius' perspective, there is always 10, 20 people involved in some capacity. And uh, it differs because there is different activities, so we need different skill set. But you need to have one person that will lead the charge. It doesn't have to be a full-time person, but it has to be somebody that will think about how these activities are progressing and the, the person that will talk with others, with managers, with people in the company to try to help them understand what is the scope of the job and how they can be involved. So out of the, the 15 to 20 people, none of those are full-time on this? It's just a passion that they have? Uh, yeah, okay. it's a passion that they have and also it's something that we, 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 we present as their, a part of their job and their time that they can use. So it's something that we are very passionate about as a company. So we. Uh, mindfully invest time in it. Cool. And yeah, thank you. Uh -huh, please. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what were like the biggest challenges? Uh, you talked about like that you did like a program for teaching game development, right? Yep. Uh, what were like the biggest challenges to like setting all that up? Uh, it was the, for us, the biggest challenge was to understand the market out there because there, the, our, our gaming industry is very segmented in the sense that there is like uh, so many different gaming studios in different stages of development. And to create a program that will give a value for all of them, it's very hard. And that was one of the biggest challenges. Um, I think that we will see because this program is now ongoing. What I can see the, the future problems could be is maybe uh, inflow on, of those new we need to spin a few rounds of this, prog of this, this game, game making boot camp so we will have more people interested in making games in the future so we can help them. And also, yeah, those are like briefly the problems, but there, is, there are many challenges out there, yeah. And, and, and just so like a positive side note, like how did the, ki uh, the, the kids react? Like did they love that? And no, they, they, are, uh, they enjoyed so much. They're constantly out there. They're like, hey, how can we do this? How, where, how, you know, they're like asking to have more time with us, to, to be there. And uh, a lot of those children then ask what, what we can do next. What are next steps? How we can be involved more? So I think the reaction was great. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Please. Uh, your uh, indie game incubator you mentioned. Uh, yeah. I'm, Obviously, your studio would have put in a lot of time and effort and money into things like PR and, and things like that for those. Uh, I'm curious what sort of uh, systems you have for like dealing with the revenue that any of those games brought in, whether it was like a revenue sharing or like a royalty based thing or what. Thank you for your question. We don't have any any connect. We don't do. We don't ask for anything. We don't even do PR. So for us, because. Um, it's a very, uh, very unique situation in Serbia. Nordius is very popular there because it's like a, it's like a startup child that everybody was looking for. And from like in our eight years, 
we grew to be such a huge success in Serbia, so everybody knows about us. In that sense, we don't, ha we don't need to do any PR, we are very recognizable. And on the other hand, this is our giving back activity. We want to, what we want to do, we are seeing the benefits in creating the industry in, that will come much later when we have 10 or 15, 30 successful gaming studios that we can maybe, that we can benefit from it in the future. So for right now, we don't want to use any, we don't want to ask for any money, any investment or anything. We just want to be there to help them out, to start and to see how it will develop. Okay, so uh, there are other people that are in the indie game incubator then. Are they like officially working for you or are they separate? No, they're, they're our colleagues that are using part of their time and their expertise to help in different areas. Okay, and uh, last question. Yeah. Uh, is your studio uh, retaining the intellectual property rights for anything they make or are they themselves? No, 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 no. everything. We don't take any credits, we don't take any royalties, nothing. We're just there to help out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh -huh, so please. Sorry, one more. It, was there anything specifically politically, logistically, that, was, that caused a lot of friction on the way to getting the system set up? From if, uh, th th those kind of frictions we have in this like higher scale uh, solving of the problems in sense like dealing with the ministries in higher education, etc. For the incubator programs, those are all run by us and we have an expertise how to do them. We have a space, so we have resources put into them in that sense. We didn't have a lot of like big frictions, or but in, when we are dealing with changing the higher education laws or trying to implement different game connected curriculums to the universities, it, it can be very hard to push because those systems are very slow. They're not reacting good on cha to, to change. So from, from that perspective, there are challenges. Thank you. Please. This is all very awesome. You know, definitely, uh, you all think about this a lot, and I think that's great. Um, I did have a question. One of the pillars you mentioned was your players. Um, I was curious if you had experimented at all with, um, ha I mean, having such a large player base and mobilizing them directly in any ways or communicating with them about these initiatives. Um, about the local initiatives that we are doing, we didn't do anything uh, around it. So for us, the players are also like the huge unexplored area that we need to do. The only activity that we did is this one and the one with one special day that we just fundraised for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was nothing that, so the only activity that we involved player like very directly was the activity for, for World Child Football Club. But I think there is like a huge potential there that we can tap into. But the, the, um, the, the game studios that did amazing things around this is Riot. Mm -hmm. They have a few different uh, awesome initiatives, how they involve players with buying different skins and etc. So you can look them up. Maybe there, there is something that can help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, people, thank you so much. I'll be in Overlook if you want to chat. And thank you for being here.